Hello everyone, welcome back. So today's discussion is overflow in SAP BTP. I believe this is a very important topic because any application that we uh, deploy to cloud BTP, of course, we need to have some authentication attached and there we use this OAuth over there. So what this OAuth flow and uh, what kind of problem statement that we're planning to resolve using OAuth. So that probably the discussion for today's tutorial. So stay tuned to the end and uh, I'll be using a lot of different tools and applications also which I created earlier the same kind of things that I'll be using to dip down uh, on, the, on the topic itself to understand how exactly it works behind the scene. Okay, so if you like this discussion, request would be to hit the like button and share it across and coming to my channel for the first time, request would be to subscribe my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon because it will intimate you the moment I upload a new content for you. So without a further ado, let's get into the topic. So when you talk about OAuth, it basically having some auth attached to this. So now this auth can be of uh, authorization as well as the authentication. But here the OAuth actually been built for authorization and not for authentication. I know like you are just maybe asking like why authentication is not a part of just only authorization. We'll definitely see it uh, soon like why this is uh, been built for and OAuth predominantly uh, was initially created rather uh, when two services used to communicate with each other and uh, there are some gap of this uh, uh, kind of a problem uh, it arise and it wanted to have this certain authorization to set across and before certain action to be performed. So that's the reason behind of having OAuth only for the authorization and not for authentication and we'll figure it out why soon. Now OAuth does have uh, initially created a version of 1.0 but the majority uh, OAuth version 2.0 is basically used. So whatever the topic will be uh, discussing over here, it's all about OAuth 2.0 only. It's always easy when we just, you know, make things a little related to the practical example to understand the topic uh, better. So this is the same kind of an attempt. So let's assume like I want to print one of uh, my photo or images over this online print media service. And uh, as you know, like current days, people don't keep the photos or something like in their local system. So I assume I'm just uh, keeping those content or resource uh, basically in a cloud. In, a, in this particular use case, it's a Google Drive where I have kept these things. So I'm saying to my this uh, application, like, hey, I just want to print something. Can you just help me and get the image from the Google Drive? So obviously, print media will just say, hey, Google Drive, can you just share it across the content? I want to print it for Somnath. Then Google Drive will, do you think, give the content back? Of course not. They will simply say, hey, I don't know you. Just get lost. I don't care what the request you are coming with. I cannot share it, this content because this is not uh, the owner is someone else. So I need to check with owner before I, you know, give it the content to you. So I cannot do this. So obviously the purpose defeated and this doesn't work. One of the option maybe uh, the print media will call out, hey, Somnath, can you just share the credentials, Google account credentials so that I can, you know, make a, you know, a login on behalf of you and get the content to print it for you. So obviously that is also not a workable solution because I cannot share across my Google credentials with uh, this print media service. So how to resolve this problem? This kind of problem basically resolved with this OAuth. So OAuth is a savior in this case. So in reality, how things will work like? So obviously the drive or the content resource proxied by this service as uh, Google service will talk to the interworld and the actual content will not be exposed, right? The resource will not be expo exposed directly. So the request when it goes to Google service, Google service will tell, okay, uh, let me check with the owner of the resource. So they will make a intimate, uh, the owner, can you just, you know, authenticate this particular request as I'm receiving from this print media? I'll say, okay, uh, I can do that. So this particular service will give me an authentication kind of a page through which I can just enter my Google credentials and it will be authenticated. Google will know, yes, I'm the exact owner. But while I'm doing it, it will make sure that the purpose or the scope of this uh, particular request is not, you know, 
uh, exceeded means it's a limited access they will provide like whatever exactly the resource i want to access it for only that it would be uh, you know allowing to this print media not enter drive access it will give it makes sense right so that's the reason it will just give a limited access i'll call it again this is a limited access given to this request to perform that particular action and if i'm you know okay or you know agreed a kind of a consent providing a consent like yes this is the action i'm uh, okay to perform by this print media to fetch this particular image only and print it and then i'm, I'm okay to provide my credentials then google drive I and mean, google service will say okay perfect fine so let me then generate a token for this request and i'll give it back to the print media so that print media once you make any further request to me make sure you attach this token to your head request and so that i can validate this token because this token has certain properties and this token is generally called the jar token or jwt means json web token we'll will also look at this token in more detail uh, soon and we'll use different tools for that so this token they'll generate and this token has certain expiry validity certain signatures uh, everything will be encrypted so obviously uh, uh, i mean the service will validate next time and will say yeah this is the token i generated last time so perfect you can just perform this action and i'll not again you know bother this particular owner to re-authenticate or re-login something so this is how the concept of oauth flow starts right so now what happens here the client requesting to the authentication service which is basically uh, allowing user to authenticate through an uh, through a web page generates a token as a json token and gives back to the client so the client takes this token as a header request and start putting the request to get the resource from so this is the overall oauth flow that it works i created a tutorial a few weeks back with like authentication node.js application using ptp and xscua uh, at two parts one is the app router another was the employee list so let's see what else the different components that i created this time we created the app router access app json access security access uaa so this is basically a btp uh, service microservice been used for this authentication service uh, uh, authentication purpose and it generates a token which is a json web token so these are the different things that we created last time so let's understand how these things uh, been can be placed uh, with that model that we discussed with the print uh, media online so here the app router will be my client which will make a request to this service and that eventually will you know ask me for that access or authentication and that is providing me this login credential and finally once i authenticate it it generates a token and this token going forward app router pass it to this service which being validated and finally this resource is being consumed so let's quickly check in the application how it works so this is my app router employee list so this is the client so if i just um, uh, select the other one so this is the direct resource so if i click on this and right click going to the incognito window and it will just simply say unauthorized because i'm not able to access anything directly because it's not exposed so one of the other way would be of course to access through app router so app router will make a request to this access ua and it will now bring in this login page for me and i'll just add my user id and password And now it is saying not found but why is it saying not found because if we just check a little bit on the code coding part so exactly i was so this application is basically trying with this access app.json which is a source it's expecting something comes with uh, forward slash emp it's an employee so if i just now go there uh, with that forward slash emp what will happen it will say welcome to employee dashboard how it how it work simply because 
in my node index.js i told like if the root path is coming then it will be printing this one why this root path because here is the root if it finds the mp in this request it will take me to this root directory and the root directory will print this one welcome to employee dashboard that is the reason i'm able to see this one now i have one more thing that is the employee list this is the actually the resource uh, route which will give me some employee details and if i now enter this employee list over here i'm expecting the information i'll get back in the json format perfect so this is how the overall model behaving so now let's understand like how this token part is being generated can we do something to see how this token looks like can we generate our own without this uh, app router uh, create this one for this what we'll do we'll be use postman as our client okay so instead of app router we'll use our postman so let's go to the postman and uh, let's this is making a request so how we'll get the resource uh, things because we have to generate the token here so we have to just check out this xsua service that been attached with this application that we are talking right so how to check this out go to uh, the service uh, instance so let's go to this trial instance and the XSUA link to the XSUA employee okay so this is the one employee list this is what i'm interested so let's uh, get into that and we'll see uh, two things been bound with that service so one is the app router and another is the employee list application now if i just open let's say app router click on view go to the form and what happens it provides certain information like client id client secret certain authentication url etc so i'll use this one to generate the token and we'll see how this token looks like so obviously i'll just copy this client id let's go there and go to this authorization part and change it to the oauth 2.0 okay so now um let's do something about this client id uh, it's already filled in that's okay i'll fill it up fill it up again that's perfectly fine and client secret client secret is of course this client secret i'm just copying it pasting it over here now this is the user id and password which you can relate with this login user id and password same thing i'm just entering my user id and password over here and finally, uh, so so here the grant type is basically password credential. That's I have just selected password credential so that I can provide this information. And now if I just click on get new access token, what will happen? Uh, here one thing is important to call out and that is this authentication URL. Authentication URL as we can see uh, in the browser is this one like ondemand.com. But I have to attach this path OAuth slash token. Okay, so you just see OAuth token. I have to pass it. Uh, I have to add attach it along it. Okay, so this I'll just add and make a request. So what will happen? It is now calling this XSUA service and providing a token which is this one, right? So let's call it new token. Okay. So this new token is a big one that's being uh, issued by and this token I want to use it access token add it cool and it's the header prefix dealer because I told I have to pass this token to my header request okay when I'll generate the request next time I'll pass this token so I'm just created the token and I'm just attaching it to my header okay now coming to the URL, which URL? Obviously the uh, the resource URL that I am uh, interested to uh, call. So in this case, uh, this particular token part and access is all done. I'll just 
directly call this resource now because I have my token already attached. So that means this is the URL I want to use uh, and followed by get get item list this one right because this is the direct path and my token is attached so what i'm expecting obviously the same response which i received somewhere i believe here yeah so same kind of a response i'll just get it now let's click on send voila you see the same response received as i just explained right so this is how the token is actually being generated behind the scene and it works like a charm so let's copy this token and see what this token all about let's uh, use a website called jwt.io okay and here if i just paste our token and you see the token is all encrypted but it's decoded over here and it has three sections the first one is header uh, which says it's a jot type just on a token see there is a sorry some scrolling problem so this is the algo rs256 being used and it has certain uh, access ua is used this service to generate and all the different information uh, being passed as you can see given name as somnath and all all different current type is password and uh, this is the user id uh, email id username all things are given okay and there is an expiry because if this token will be, uh, remain valid for a certain time and finally, it is giving the signature, which is using a SHA algorithm 256 to generate this signature, which is kind of an encrypted and no one can decrypt this one because it's a one way conversion. So when this token now I'm being, I'm, I'm passing it back again with this uh, header request, it's being validated. And if this algorithm and this signature being valid, uh, then only it will be uh, consumed. These resources can be accessed. And we have seen how Postman is able to uh, you know access the resource directly from the cloud btp using this uh, authentication token that's all i believe it was helpful to you and thanks for watching and we'll again connect soon with a different topic till then goodbye